everybody and welcome to Hannah's Happy Space. My name is Hannah um, and you're here in my happy space which is at home. Um, if you haven't been here before I live in a town on the edge of Dartmoor down in Devon in the southwest of England. Um, sorry I could just hear a helicopter and I'm hoping that you're not going to hear too much of it on um, on the video um this weekend has been 10 tours which is a walking race along all the the 10 tours of dartmoor um it has finished yesterday but there's been an awful lot of um people <laughs> loads of people loads of traffic um and obviously a lot of army presence they have helicopters going over all the time we have a lot of helicopters anyway because we're on the edge of the moors um so hopefully you won't pick that up I will apologise right now if I keep fiddling with my hair. Um, this has been a bit of an unplanned podcast, so uh, I've had to quickly straighten it this morning. And as you can see, this is out of control. I'm having a haircut tomorrow, so I will try not to fiddle with it too much. So just, yeah, please try and ignore that. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, where was I? What was I telling you? Where I am? Done that. Check. <laughs> um, if you've not been here before, I will quickly just say, like I say, I'm here at home. I live with my sister Cara, older sister Cara, and her son Sebi, who, uh, my nephew, who is nine. Neither of them are here this morning. That's why I've quickly jumped on. Um, Cara's had to go and collect Sebi. He's been away this weekend. Um, so, yes. That's pretty much me. Today is the 1st of May. I did check. 1st of May, it's a bank holiday here in England. Um, so no school or work for anyone, well, most people today. Um, so hopefully you're having a very lovely day. Thank you for joining me here, like I said. Um, I feel myself saying um a lot. Let's try and stop that as well. Thank you for all those uh, returning to the channel. Thank you so much for coming back. It's really, really lovely to know that you are sticking around. And for those of you who maybe are watching for the first time today, you are very welcome. Everyone is welcome here. Maybe if you like what you see, um, like the video, leave a comment or subscribe. Um, I'll probably remind you of that at the end, but that's all great. Actually, I big thank you to those who um, have subscribed. I think since I came back, so this is my third video since I've had that big sort of break in um, filming, I've had a big uh, lo lot, big lot, <laughs> a large number of subscribers come along. So that is brilliant. Thank you so much. I feel this might be a bit rambly because it's sort of planned, but not planned. I knew, know what I've got and what I'm going to talk to you about because that was planned anyway, but it wasn't planned to happen today. So it might be a bit hit and miss. I keep looking outside because over that way is our conservatory doors and I can see and it's just about, um, it's just gone very grey. And if you watch any other English podcasters, you'll know we like to talk about the weather. It has been a, a strange weekend. We've not actually been in Oakhampton. We got home yesterday. Um, we've been in Plymouth for the weekend with my brother Dominic and his sister, his sister, that's awful, his girlfriend, Charlotte, it's because I went with my sister, me and Cara went and stayed in Plymouth with Dom and Charlotte and it was beautiful, we had a really lovely time, um, the weather was lovely, um, I'll tell you a bit more about that, but we got home and it was torrential rain, so <laughs> we get a lot of rain here up on the moors, so it might all of a sudden go very dark and pour with rain. We'll see what happens. Uh, like I said, yes, we have had a lovely weekend down in Plymouth. Um, went and stayed with Dom in his new place. Haven't been down there before to see him. So we had a very lovely weekend. Just sort of hanging out. Um, ate far too much food. <laughs> we What did we do? We went to a garden centre, very grown up. Um, Dominic and Charlotte are obsessed with houseplants. They've got loads of houseplants. Um, plus there's always a lovely cafe at Garden Centre, isn't there? So we did that. We went on a little boat over to Mount Edgecombe. Um, 
which I think it is technically Cornwall. You get a little boat across, um, and we had a lovely lunch, um, a little little you know stroll on the beach, a little bit that was there. Got the boat back, um, and the main reason we went wasn't the main reason, but one of the main things we wanted to do was to watch the film The Bodyguard. I'll explain why. For Christmas, Charlotte bought uh, theatre tickets for Dom and her to see The Bodyguard the musical. So me and Cara are also going, we've got tickets. One of our favourite films, they had never seen it. Now, my brother's only 30 um, and Charlotte's 25. So the babies, they don't know, they didn't even, you know, they've never seen it. The film actually is the same age as Dom, it's 1992. <laughs> so we um, had a takeaway and Dom's got a projector, so he projected the film up on the wall, so it's like being at a mini cinema, um, and luckily they loved the film, so that is what we are doing in beginning of July. We are going to stay with them and go and watch The Bodyguard at the theatre. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to know all that, but now you do. Um, so yeah, that's what we've been up to, uh, you know, normal, apart from when I've not seen you before, you know, normal school things um all that nothing else too major to report there i don't think no um sebi has been away this weekend like i said he's staying with his dad but his um mini tour has started so if you've been here before sebi is um a massive golf fan since he was about two years old he's been interested in golf and he is very talented I have to say not just being biased because he's my nephew he is incredibly um, good at golf his uh, mini tour has started this weekend he played yesterday not sure how it went yet the weather was a little bit iffy I think but he has won the last two and that's up to 18 year olds and like I say he's nine so he's uh, put a little bit of pressure on himself I think but we'll just hope he does well that's all we can hope for um and I think that's probably it for stuff about me. Um, I'm just going to have a drink. I feel I'm rambling. Um, and then you get dry throat, don't you? Okay. Shall we talk about some crafts, some knitting and things? That's probably what you've come to, to hear me ramble about, not just about myself. So, okay. We will start, as usual, with finished objects. I'm trying to think how long it's been since I saw you last. Um, three weeks? Four? Is it coming up? Four? I don't think it's quite that long. Might be. Anyway, so what I've been up to over those last couple of weeks. Finished objects. I am wearing one. Um, actually, I showed you one of these last time. Don't worry. Every time I see you, there will not be a new Felix pull over so I'm looking in the wrong place as well there won't be in that one of these every time um but I did finish I was just seeing if my other one was around I had a purpley one um that I made last time and it was such a quick knit I loved it and I thought I'd definitely need more um and while I was sort of in the in the mood for them I got some more yarn that's what I'm looking for is a yarn label um which is one thing I've forgotten to get so there might be lots of stretching that way if I've sort of piled things up over there. Yes, the Felix pullover. So I started this actually because uh, mum knitting one. So she came up and cast on together so that I could help her out with it. She has got to here and hasn't picked it up again since. This was two weeks, got to be at least two weeks ago because I've worn it several times. Um, and I have finished mine, not to show off to her, but um, it's a Aran Waite jumper and it's knit on six mil needles. I won't tell you too much because it's a pay for pattern. Um, so it knits up quickly. Now, hopefully, I was worried about wearing this on screen because you know when you watch people, I went wiggling around, you know when you watch people on TV and they have highly patterned sort of this sort of thing, it sort of strobes. So hopefully it's not doing that. Um, I'm looking at my camera and it's not doing it there, so hopefully not. Um, the yarn is, like I said, an Aran weight. It is Stylecraft Special Aran with Wool, um, which is an 80% acrylic, 20% wool. And obviously it's a great big label because this was a 400 gram ball. 
the colourway is shade 5512 Magpie Marl. I wanted a black jumper um, and then I thought that's going to be quite um, a challenge to knit. Um, saw this and thought oh I'll go for this instead. Really good value um, especially because it's got wool in it. Now I did have to have two balls um 400 grams which is annoying because um i do knit the biggest size for this jumper and it takes 500 grams approximately so i've got 300 grams or so of this left which will be used for something i'm sure but they they do you know obviously you could get 100 gram balls of things but not in this particular colorway just going to get a little bit closer because it's really hard to see i know i've shown you before it's got this um lace yeah i've got a greenishy color top I should have put something brighter on underneath this up mm, can't see it i don't think that's even just about sort of v v-shaped eyelets down the raglan slightly cropped um i told you a lot about it last time so you can always go back and have a look if you haven't seen it before so if this is the felix pullover by savory knitting I'm looking down there because that's where my notes are. Um, yeah, so it, that's that is this. I think I've got it out of my system for a minute, although I am thinking that there probably will be more. I might even make um, sort of a long version. Of, you know, to wear with trousers and things. This I wear with dresses. Um, it's cropped, but you know, not crop cropped. <laughs> um, longer cropped, just the right. Um, length to sort of wear with, these, with long dresses and all dresses whatever things that I like to wear okay sorry ramble ramble I think <sighs> breathe I'm looking down it's like it's organized um socks let's move on to socks I've got two pairs of socks to show you let's start with the vanilla that I've shown you before these were my um what I call handbag socks traveling socks now I'm not sure yeah that it's a bit blowing out a little bit because let me show you the ball and we'll see if that's any better that's like that it is it is a pale color but not quite as pale as it's showing up so um like I said before I showed these last time or the time before this is quite an old colourway that I had in stash. This is from um, Siobhan Crafts and it was an Easter colourway. And she did maybe two years ago, if not slightly longer. Let's see if I can... A little bit. There we go, that's a little bit better. Because, um, so the main colour is this pale yellow. Then we've got um, pinks and purples, blues, peaches... Sort of running through so like I say it's just a vanilla sock um my basic vanilla sock recipe comes from the Winwick mum that's how I learned to knit socks and it's pretty much what I stick to so they're cuff down I always do <coughs> excuse me I always do a two by two rib um for about 15 ish rows then I knit the leg to however long I fancy them being. <laughs> Lots of people also, you know, I'd knit so many rows or so much length. I like a slightly longer sock, um, but I will just knit until I think, yep, yeah, that's about right. I do a heel flap and gusset. This is a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. Um, and obviously your sort of standard heel turn. Then you've got your decreases in the gusset. Did I call that a heel? What did I just call that? A heel flap and gusset? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, then I knit for the foot. I've got size eight feet, so, you know. Um, and then this is just about to see the decreases for the toe, which I think is a, a standard wedge toe, something like that. Like I say, um, Winwick Mum, free pattern if you haven't knit socks before i'd highly recommend 
her tutorials she's got um sort of a sock along she's got you can get a book we've got the book but all the patterns are online for free i'll link it down below everything i talk about will be linked in the comments below if it's not let me know um if i can't find a link i'll just put the information and if you just search it you'll you'll come across it she also has um facebook group so you know get lots of ideas or help whatever you need there are two just you know to prove that i have made two socks um but yeah now i've got these fancy sock blockers as i'm a proper knitting podcaster now um i thought i'd use them so that is that pair there sorry stretching over um put that wall away so i've got plenty left that will go into something else that's in my one of my old i think this is one of the first project bags i made um yeah because it's just a standard drawstring so that can go over there um second pair of socks i have put these on instagram so if you follow me on instagram you'll have seen these already these are my entry for denise dear dear designs year of the sock yeah that's what it is year of the sock and it was april's uh, prompt was easter i think when i showed you these yeah i hadn't even started these had i when i showed you these before i just showed you the colors that i've chosen um so this is the finished sock i've got such big feet look i've got to hold them all the way back here this is the finished sock um so what have we got here again i used my basic winwick mum sock recipe but i have you put some pattern in so this slip stitch detail here which i probably could have just worked out myself there are loads of patterns on ravelry for this sort of design i picked up um, a free pattern called uh twizzler socks and it's by tangled becca i'll put it down below it's a free pattern on ravelry like i said just because i wasn't sure 100 percent how to make sure i got this just right but otherwise i used all my own cuffs and heels and toes there are two Two of those i if you see me pausing a bit more often i'm trying to get a decent um thumbnail you know if you watch other podcasts they're like oh this this is my thumbnail will i get a thumbnail mine are always dreadful <laughs> i quite often have to go back through and try and screenshot a decent picture i obviously i don't know don't look at the camera for long enough or do something so if you see me pausing a little bit more often don't think i've you know broken I'm just stopped like a fool to, to try and get a photo. Ridiculous. Okay, let me tell you what these socks are knit using. Um, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so I've got contrasting cuff and heel. There was going to be contrasting toe originally, but I, I forgot to be honest. I just carried on. I don't mind. Looks all right. Looks fine. The both the yarns are the same brand. They're both West Yorkshire Spinners um, signature four ply. I've only got a ball band for the, the main colour. So this top for the cuff is, um, I've got it written down, chocolate lime. I don't have a ball band for that one. Um, it's not exactly the same colour as the green in the main colour, but it's, it's really close, close enough. For, for you know not to notice um so that's the contrast color the main color so i've got the ball band for this one is a signature four ply again um and this is wildflower that's this one and actually i thought i would do the slip stitch pattern with this yarn because i thought it was going to be you know like a standard stripe um just you know but this one sort of blends into each other you get like a thicker bit then a thinner bit i think that this this still shows up really nicely um but yeah i know this slip stitch design works really well with a, you know like a solid stripe 
um yeah so this one is wildflower um and it is actually a winwick mum collection sock <clears throat> winwick mum sock collection is that what she calls it anyway that's that's that one done quite a lot of socks in west george spinners one of my favorite um commercial sock yarns really hard wearing um yeah so those are like i say are my easter entry or my april entry for um dear designs sock along for this year um i thought the colors were fairly eastery and a nice springtime colors um and like i said on instagram i may have eaten one or two easter eggs whilst knitting them so definitely easter socks okay so that is socks yeah that's it for socks what is next um yeah that's it for knitting actually for finished objects anyway a bit more crochet this time um i had for christmas going back this book here pika pal animal friends of pika pal 3 dominic gave me this for christmas and i haven't made anything from it yet so i was having a little flick through the other day um actually the reason I thought, oh, I'll have a look through my books and do something is because I was watching lovely Jeanette from Crafty Clothes Creations. A little while ago, she did a video showing all her Amigurumi books and there was a tag going around for a little while. Um, and she was aiming to try and make one thing from all of her books. Um, and I thought, do you know what? I've got, I haven't got a huge amount of books. Um, but I have got a couple and I love these Pika Pal books. I've made quite a few things from the first book. I've got all three. I'm just looking that way. I've got quite a few dotted around the house um, and they're really lovely. So I thought I'll have a look through, see what I fancy. And Sebby was having a little look through as well. I'm just going to find the page where it has like a, um, there we go, a page that shows you all the different patterns. So lots of lovely things. I really like this seagull and the chicken, but I didn't, I normally do them out of cotton. Um, I don't have any white or enough white cotton to do, to do one of those, but I was looking through anyway, and Sebby saw this Daxum. He loved, he loves dogs, absolutely loves them. Um, and he asked if I'd make him one of those. So I said, yes obviously um i'm just gonna find the pattern page which i should have done let me just show you that side so that's the dachshund roberto the dachshund he's called in the book sebi's um called his percy after my mum's dog and he chose the colors now i've had to <laughs> he's looking a little bit worse for wear because i've had to go and find sneak this out of sebi's bed um He's got all bits of fluff stuck to him. What is what is that? A bit of grass. <laughs> so I try and just squeeze him back into shape. Here he is. Um, this one I haven't done in cotton. I let you know, told him what asked him what colours he wanted, and then I had a look through my um acrylic double knit stash. So he chose dark brown chose dark brown for the body. Thank you for the evenings, which isn't great. Um, so dark brown for the body. He wanted a little pink nose, black ears and tail. And he chose red and green for this part. Is it a scarf? Is it a top? I'm not sure. Um, which made me think he was a little bit Christmassy. But that's, you know, what Sebi chose. Um, yeah. Yeah. Pattern was really uh, easy to follow. To be honest, I have done an awful lot of amigurumi in my time. So most patterns are fairly easy to me. There, you know, there are, it's not completely round and round and round like a normal amigurumi. There are bits where you go off and uh, you know, join bits in, but fairly straightforward. Um, yeah, so that's Sebi's, ooh, um, Percy the Dachshund. 
hopefully he won't mind that I've shown him without his, you know, without asking him. Um, yeah. So that's the first one I made. Um, and because I made that one, I thought, I thought to myself, I'm sure I've got something else started elsewhere from a Peter Pal book. Um, I thought that was a bit rude when I just chucked that poor dog over there. <laughs> But I had nothing else to tell you about him. So I was looking through um, stash and bits and bobs and found my crochet bag, crochet and things. This was a gift from Cara for my birthday one year, I think. Um, and came across a partly made project. And this time it was from this book. Animals, Animal Friends of Peekabout, do. Um, let me find the page with all the bits of patterns. So lots of different patterns. I've made quite a few from here before actually, which you, not quite a few, two, <laughs> um, which you might have seen on the channel before. I made um, Sloth and the Owl. Um, this time I have made, or finished making, I'm not sure how long he's been in the bag, quite a while. Oh dear, here he is. Darwin the turtle. So that's him there. I was just going to see if there was another pet. There we go, there's a side on. You can see his little shell. So Sheldon the turtle, he was in pieces. I had a few extra bits to make and da, da, da. here he is. Oh, cute. I think he's really sweet. Um, but then I find that with all my amigurumi. Um, this time I have used cotton like I do with most of my amigurumis. I have used a selection of Oh, it's going to blow out because it's shiny. Rikurumi DK. These are little balls. Let me see if I've got a whole one. That's a different colour. So these are 20 gram balls or 25 gram balls. 25 gram balls. So they're little, little balls. Loads of colours. Um, so that's what I've used. I can't tell you what colours I have used, I'm afraid. Um... I just sort of looked through my stash and used colours that was closest to the ones in the book or ones that I fancied using. Um, yeah, so there he is. This one, you know, sort of made in bits that were sewn on and all that kind of thing. Little spotty shell. Um, little welly boots. The welly boots do come off. They won't be coming off. <laughs> um, because they were really hard to get on i had to really ram his feet in there um so they won't be coming off but there's no need for them to so that <laughs> that is um what did i say it was called darwin i was just looking at my patterns and i've written down it's called sheldon i've just made up a completely different name for him um anyway that is lovely little Darwin, I've just said it. That's lovely little Darwin. He's um, actually been up on the mantelpiece and that is where he will be returning to. So yeah, that's from Pick a Pouch. I have got a, oh, that's not ply rate holding, is it? <laughs> I have got um, a work in progress from the same book, similar to these. I tend to do this with Amigurumi. Don't do a lot. For a while and then i make one thing and think oh, i really enjoyed that i'm gonna make 10 more so there we go i have got should i show that now yeah i have got sorry i've got another finished pro finished object to show this time is sewing so um if you watched before you'll know that i have in the past made my own project bags like I just showed where did I put it oh this one 
that was when I was learning. Um, I have made other ones before um, and I had a new pattern to make a different type of bag, or slightly different. Um, so gave it a go. Um, let me show you. This is the bag. It's quite big. Um, I did have all the measurements written down, but I'd say it was um, a shawl sized bag because it's similar to my, similar size to what she says. To, I can't work out the perspective. It's similar size to my um, Jurassic Park Amelia X Joy bag that I use. Um, which I've got a shawl in. Anyway, this is the bag. So it's we're not I'm not gonna show you too close up because it's very interesting stitching. Um there are a few little puckery bits, but I'm keeping this for me, so it's not a problem. This one also um is lined but not padded. I'll go into more. So it's a drawstring bag, um, but it also has these little handles. So you can tuck that bit down and then it's a little like tote style bag. Um, like I say, it's big enough to fit a shawl in or equivalent. This fabric is um, a set of fat quarters I picked up from Hobbycraft. The pattern itself um, is by a lady called Helen Newton, um, who does a lot of free motion embroidery. The pattern actually has free motion embroidered sheep on the front of hers, which I will probably do at some point, but this was just to trial out this style of bag. So, that is the bag. I have made another one of these bags um, and didn't take a photo and haven't got it. I made a smaller version, so probably let's fold this up a little bit. Maybe this sort of size ish sock size. And I have handed that over to my lovely friend Ruth. Ruth loves to knit. It's taken a while to mention her today. I've handed that over to her. Um, to test for me also she's gonna keep it <laughs> um i think actually the fabric that i made it from was stuff that she'd gifted me anyway so she's gonna take it away she's gonna test it for me um see how it how it works see if it's any good um i'm gonna have another go at making one of these size ones but i am going to use some wadding to pad out this area because we were talking about it and we thought with a bag this size, you're probably knitting something larger. You're probably using um, bigger needles and they might poke through. So we thought, yeah, put the wadding in. The plan is if they are good enough. I don't know if that's quite the right way to say it. If they're suitable, if, we think we, if I think I get them just how I like them, I'm going to start selling them. Um, that is the plan is to start making because I've got so much fabric and I love making these bags um different types of bags as well and I can't keep them all so the plan is to eventually start selling them and to start um dyeing wool again and maybe even try and sell some of that that's the plan definitely the bags and I'm pretty sure the yarn as well um so I have opened a Kofi account which I wasn't going to say anything about until everything was you know sorted the Kofi account at the moment is just a Kofi account if you want to support me financially that's so I don't like doing this um if you want to leave a little tip you know buy me a coffee is the um idea that there is a link below but that is where I will be running a shop from so there, you don't have to go over there and do anything at all. Um, but in the future, if you're interested in buying any of my products, that's where they're going to be. Enough said. <laughs> that's the bag. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, if it's the type of bag you'd use, if you'd change it, if you'd, you know, 
whatever you whatever you think this is the first type of bag it has got a box bottom as well um so it's a bit a bit more roomy in the bottom um there are going to be different types of bags similar to this one but i do prefer a box bottom now a bit more space so there'll be ones like this as well and i have got a pattern to try out um to make a zipper pouch i've never done zips before so we will be giving that a go as well right that is it for finished objects Whew. okay finished objects done let's look at some work in progress shall we um let me start with the with the crochet because that's what i was talking about just a minute ago we are sticking with peek power two i should have found the page one moment please talk about yourselves no that's not it do, 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 do. ah oh there she is okay so the next one that i have started is agatha b Woo! there she is very sweet lots of different color work techniques here i think um they call it tapestry crochet i think that's the idea i was just going to see if there's a picture of from a different angle yeah so you can just see on the back little wings little stinger i think she's got little boots as well hasn't she oh no we have more feet to force into boots um, let me show you how far I've got with her. Again, I'm using Rika Rumi Double Knit. It is in my very bright crochet and things bag. Um, so I have got as far as, looks like a potato. <laughs> I have got as far as making the body. Um, which was quite a lot of work actually because you see there are a lot of colour changes this is all done in one piece but you follow the um, charts for the colour changes to make these different designs oh she does look like a potato doesn't she eventually she'll be a bee <laughs> oh dear I didn't think I put the back on her eye very well there hold on right so yes that's her body so as you could see from the pictures show you, hold on. show you any instructions um there she is she needs arms and legs and wings and bits and pieces all still to go and boots um yeah so it's not a huge amount more I can tell you about that. She will be finished by the time I see you again. Um, like I say, I have been using Rikarumi DK. Apart from this dark grey colour, didn't have anything in stash that was the same brand. Um, so I went with... Oh, no, the label's gone. This here, which is Drops Cotton Light. To be honest with you, I don't like it. I knew I didn't like it because I think I've used it for something else, but it was all I had in stash. It's really splitty. Um, I don't know if it's something to do the way I particularly crochet, how I hold things, but it, it seems to untwist. But I did only need it for a little bit so you know just persevered same weight works with it um but I am gonna have to do his, the arms and legs in it but you know it'll be fine it'll be okay so that's little Agatha B pop her away okay that's the only other crochet project I'm working on let's have a look at knitting now i thought i was going to have another finished object to show you but i did not quite so it's here in my jurassic park bag from amelia x joy ooh, ooh. now i've got two <laughs> two balls of yarn attached to this at the moment so oh no you're fine 
really really good this is going to be impossible to show you size wise Let's get untangled this is my eyelet burst shawl by Stephen West Um, and like I say, I thought it was going to be finished to show you, but not quite. I took this with me at the weekend. And um, cause it's so simple. It's just big. Oh, my word. Where's that coming from? <laughs> Sorry about this. Right. OK. So I've only got it on a 100 centimetre cable. It's the longest I've got. So... You see, it doesn't look like anything, does it? Um, I have shown you this before. So it starts, this is the top. The colours are all going to blow out. Oh. So this first yarn, yeah, it's a beautiful blue with um, purple and green speckles throughout. The sun's coming out now. I wonder if I just go and shut the curtain one moment and we'll see if that does anything. One second. Okay. okay, let's see if that's done anything at all. Oh, a little bit. Okay, let me get a bit closer. Okay, still not true to colour. Oh, that's my stitch marker for the what's the front so the first colour is um east colourway from Mandy what's that mouse witch yarns Whew. Mandy from <laughs> uh mouse's makes the second colour I wonder actually if I've got any left well that's the second colour that I've got a little bit left of blowing out because it's lots of neons in there um, that is a Lucky Dip yarn from James Makes Yarn I'm just finding the bar so you blend it with the first one and then into the next part the yarn after that one see if I can get yeah it's not showing up bright enough at all hopefully I'll be able to get some good photos once it's finished see I love neons and bright colors but they are really hard to show um, That's that one. Again, just think of it as more, you know, the colours are a bit darker. That is, um, nope. Not in there, typical. That is um, Woolly Mama Yarns, and it, it's acceptable in the 80s, I think it's called. It was acceptable in the 80s. I was just seeing if I had it on some of I have talked about this before. So if you want more information, it'll be back on some previous videos. And I have just started the final colour, which I do have a label for. Ha ha! Somerset Yarns. This is colourway Jellyfish. And this is... Oh, it got... Of, I don't know which bit to block out. Um, again, super bright. This is pinks and yellows and oranges, and you can only just see. I mean, you won't be able to see, to be honest, because it's striped, striped with that previous colour. Um, and they're quite similar so I have done one two three four stripes of that color I've got to do five stripes of that color um, with the previous and then the next little bit on its own and then the almighty 
eye cord bind off um it does say when you get to the end you'll be on 645 stitches i'm must be on over 600 now i haven't counted um so the rows do take some time they're not hard at all it's a two, two row pattern repeat they just take a long time so again when i see you next this will be finished and like i say hopefully somehow i'll be able to take some photos um it's you know it's because i always choose these bright neon colors they're so hard to photograph properly i had a problem with it's not here my um starflake shawl i put some i showed you that on here before <coughs> excuse me showed you that on here before and it all the colors blew out um managed to get it outside and take some photos so if you want to see how that turned out after blocked and and see the colours properly that is on Instagram um so I will hopefully see it just does looks like a big pile of I don't know lovely squishy garter stitch um yeah I'll get some better photos at some point I will just show you my little needle stoppers Cara bought me these um little grogu's I'm a big Star Wars fan. We're very Star Wars heavy at home at the moment. Um, Sebi, it, I'm educating Sebi on the joys of Star Wars. <laughs> so we are watching a lot of Star Wars at the moment. I have also purchased several Star Wars bags from Amelia X Joy. She had, um, I don't know if it's still on actually, I think it might finish now, a 20% off code. And I saw Mandy from Mouse's Makes had bought um, a Star Wars and a Star Trek bag and she had all coordinated with stitch markers and it was amazing. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get some. <laughs> so I blame Mandy for that. Um, yes, let me put that somewhere. It's just about fitting in this bag. It's fine. Um, so we'll pop that away. Sorry, I can't show you that better because it is beautiful. The colours are absolutely lovely. Um, and once it's finished, it's going to be really nice. It's going to be nice, big, obviously big because it's Stephen West. He doesn't do small shawls, does he? Okay, in it goes. <clears throat> lovely. Okay, that's that. Oh, I've got other bright things to show you that probably aren't going to show up all that well either. So, what should we show you next? Let's do this one here. So, I, um, a couple of years ago, it was 2021, had the advent from the Discreet Unicorn. I've mentioned um, Miriam on here several times. If you saw some of my dodgy Vlogmas of 2021, you will have seen me open some of these. This is the bag the advent came in. And here are some of the colours. Let's see if I can. They're all in here, all still skeined. I'm just winding them as and when I need them. There's also a ball, two balls of a contrast colour in here. Let me show you what I am making. It's in here at the moment. This is one of my bags. Um, using a piece of English paper piecing I did. Which actually, my mum bought me this fabric because it's called Han's House. No, the other one calls me Han. So that's that. Anyway, you don't want to see the bag, you want to see what's inside. I am knitting the Radvent cardigan by Amber O'Brien. Amber Before I show you, I must say, I have posted this on Instagram whilst working on it, but um, also what I should say is I have stolen this idea, it's completely stolen, um, from lovely Nancy, who is um, Kitty Scrapper. She has a YouTube channel and she's on Instagram. She too is a lover of neons and brights and she made this cardigan using this advent um and contrasted it with grey i'm sorry nancy it was so beautiful that i thought that's what i'm going to do with my advent i did have another plan 
um, had another pattern ready for it and it was um, a shawl and I just thought, oh, cardigan. If I can get my size cardigan out of an advent, definitely I will, will do that and I'll get more use out of it. Um, sorry, I'm just fiddling around trying to get it in the right place. Um, so I'm very sorry, Nancy, if you're watching. I hope you don't mind. We don't live anywhere near each other. We won't bump into each other wearing it. <laughs> um, think of it. What is it they say about copying being the highest form of flattery or something? That's what it is. It was so, honestly, I saw it and thought, that's amazing. I have to make that. So I'm fiddling around trying to get it sorted out. Okay, I, this is probably going to blow out completely. This is one sleeve. I'm just, there we go. That's what I'm trying to get. So start, you knit it from here and go across. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you loads because it's a paid for pattern. So this is the cuff. And then you go across and it's um, bat winged. Oh, it's not too bad. Oh, that went funny, didn't it? Um, so we've gone from purples through the pinks, oranges, and I'm just onto this really bright yellow. Um, I've split, so you do like a really um, wide sleeve, like a bat wing sleeve. Um, and then this is where you then go onto the body. It is a cropped cardigan. It's got um, underneath this... Underneath this bright bit will be um, ribbing, similar to the cuff, and then it's got a rib along and around the front. Um, so I've just split now to do it's either the back or the front. I think it's the back. So you knit these two long pieces from sleeve to sleeve, and then you join the two pieces together. And this actually had a new technique to me. It's not the neatest of things, but once you've finished, again, I don't want to say too much. Can I? I'll just tell you what this piece was. When you finish a sleeve, you have to then go onto the body. But for part of it, you had to do something, something called a Turkish cast on. No idea what that was. I'm just trying to see if I can get it. I have put a stitch marker in it because there's a tiny little hole that I want to sew up. So that is a Turkish cast on. Ooh. Um, show you from the other side. I don't know. People will probably watch this thinking, yeah, what? Great. Well done. <laughs> I know how to do that. Um, apparently a lot of people use it for toe up socks. Never done a toe up sock. So, um, yes, if you want to know more about the Turkish cast on, you'll have to search it, search it up, have a look. Um, it wasn't that difficult. But it did require YouTube for me. Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, what this grey was. Anyway, we've got lots of bits hanging around here because it's split. Um, I've got one bit on a on a cable that I'm not using. I am using. You would have noticed, or may have noticed as well, on the eyelet burst. I am using my Symphony Knit Pro ends. That's what I always use for these. And I am on to the Mindful Cables. Love these. I bought several more after I had that one. Um, these are the swivels so that, you know, they swivel. <laughs> I did talk about them before, but yes, loving these. Um, the grey. Just in case you wanted to know, it is, let's put this away, so I stop fiddling with it. I will put a picture of what the actual cardigan looks like. I'll put a picture in. Oh, I remember to do that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> I am using, I got this on Wool Warehouse. It was on sale. It was, I think it was less than two pounds a ball. The Serdar Snuggly 4-ply and in the colourway Cub. It is unbelievably soft. Obviously, it's like a baby yarn, but it's um, where is it? nylon acrylic. So it's 55% nylon, 45% acrylic. Um, I know, I'm sorry, it's not wool alongside the lovely wool that I'm using, but hey-ho. 
it's so soft really lovely um and that's what i'm using for the cuffs and the collar and um the rib at the bottom i did you don't need a lot i did only buy two 50 gram balls i wonder if it's going to be enough it's easy to get hold of if i don't need if i do need any more <sighs> that's that okay what one more thing don't worry i've only got one more thing to show you <laughs> just quickly actually while i remember um because i said i'm going to put a picture in i don't know if you remember last time i asked about what people thought about pictures being in and things because i don't print patterns um and asked people if they podcasted what editing software they used thank you very much to lovely alex from my yarny corner she has suggested the editing software that she uses and it's going to save me a fortune so thank you very much hopefully the editing will go well okay let's get back here we go yeah last one this is as i was saying um i'd bought some bags from amelia x joy with star wars theme I'll quickly show you the other two because I wasn't going to do an incoming. This is the one I'm using at the moment. Excuse me. These are the other two that I got. Um, this one is a little, oops, let's try. And, this is a small, smaller bag that she does. And that's Mandalorian. And the final one is another Mandalorian, Grogu. This is a larger one, the same size as the Jurassic Park one. That's um, Grogu. So they're my new new project bags. And I know I shouldn't be buying project bags because I can make them, but I, you know, I don't have all this Star Wars fabric. <laughs> and 20% off. What was I showing you? This, okay. Da -da -da. this is only little um yeah i've got lots of little bits of wool in here let me show you so little teeny weenies um really little have i already done green no that's a tiny little one i've got there i have weighed all these had my little tiny scales out weighing because to do a little bit of math for this project this is the little left little leftovers cowl by telly bean knits stop whilst i can hold it up i don't know when i got this pattern but i think it i don't want i don't even know if it might have been a free pattern or a discounted pattern um probably discounted this is designed for i don't know if it's specifically for ad for an advent or for advent leftovers because it's 25 colors um and you you there's a little section for each basically and it breaks it all down into meterage of each color you need so i did a little bit of maths going on that 400 um, 100 gram for 100 grams of four ply approximately 400 meters that's what i was going on so four meters would be one gram of yarn does that make sense the smallest amount you need is five meters of yarn which i've gone for two grams so that i'm over and the largest amount of yarn you need is 34 meters which I've gone for around nine grams. So it's a real good stash buster of tiny bits. And you know I'm a fan of teeny tiny bits, can't throw anything away. This is gonna be, again, hard to show. Um, so this is the top. As you can see, it, there's a rainbow, as usual. Um, I've only got it on a very short cable because I'm about to join it. It starts off knit, knitted flat. I just about get that one. And then you join it up. So it'll be 
sort of like this. Oh, it's very close to the fingers. And then, it, and then I'll join up. Oh, quick, get back on there. But each section is a different stitch pattern. So a really great advent project, really. Keep you interested because you've got different colours, different patterns. You do have this repeating garter panel. But so we've had sort of stock in it. Um, moss stitch or seed stitch some people call it don't they we've got lace panels all sorts um so a great way of learning new stitch patterns um trying ones out see what you like see what you don't like again i will put a picture in so that you can see what it is meant to look like um look at all these ends oh dear Lots of ends to sew in um, is the only thing, obviously, with all these colours going on. So that is the start of um, another lovely, bright, rainbow, scrappy project, which I love. Um, I'll put it back on there so I don't lose any stitches. Um, yeah, I've, like I say, it's onto these circulars because it's going to be joined up in the round shortly. When I started this, it's knit flat. I knit everything on circular needles, even if they are flat knit. Um, but I didn't have the right size ends. So I did start them on proper straight. So I did start it. And obviously it was only a tiny weeny bit. I learned to knit with these. These now are awful. <laughs> I got, it was, they were too long. I was all didn't know where to put my hands, my arms were doing weird things, it was not a pleasant experience, but it's crazy to think everyone who was knitting, you know, there are loads of people who still knit on all these, and I learned to knit with these, but now they're just, <sighs> anyway, that's enough of that. Okay, that was the last thing to show, thank goodness you say. Um, yeah, so that is everything that I am currently working on um, or have finished. Um, like I said, there was a, I've put some pictures on Instagram of my star flake finished, um, finished and blocked. And also my slip crazy. I took some photos of that as well after it had been blocked. Um, I'm just looking to see if I've got anything else over there that I should show you, but I don't think so. Um, no, I need to work on my blanket here. I haven't done anything on that for ages. That needs to be worked on. Um, but I'm sure other cast-ons will get in the way before then. <laughs> um, like I said, hopefully I should finish um, my eyelet burst by the time I see you next. And my little bee. I will have more socks to show you because... May's prompt for the Dear Designs Year of the Sock is either Star Trek or Star Wars. Ha ha! Um, so obviously I have plenty of Star Wars accessories. I will be watching Star Wars, no doubt. And I have ordered May... Um, no, it wasn't the, the colour of the month. That was something different. From Mouse Switch Yarns, from Mandy, she did a Star Wars and a Star Trek inspired colorway so i'm still waiting on that one to come and as soon as that comes that will become a pair of socks possibly just a vanilla pair um i'm not sure we shall see um i think that's the only planned whip or not whip planned cast on to do um and that is it i might i always said this last time i might look in the box that's got one or two languishing whips then again i might not um i will be making more bags that is the plan this afternoon actually to go and cut some bags out um and that is it that is everything when i see you next time also um this will be sorted out i won't you know i will actually be able to see properly i mean look this is a real claudia winkleman situation going on just meh Right, that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. 
if you've managed to make it all the way through well done um okay like i said everything i've talked about will be at the bottom if i've forgotten anything let me know um if you like the video <laughs> If you liked it for some crazy reason, give it a thumbs up. That'd be lovely. Um, leave me a comment. It's always lovely to hear from you all. And if you really liked it and you aren't already subscribed, please do subscribe. I'm trying to grow this little channel a little bit bigger. Um, but yes, thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you all again. Who knows when? It won't be too long. Keeping on top of things. But I will see you all again soon and I hope you all have a very lovely time until then. See you all again soon, guys. Bye.